Well, welcome back to the Care Team Podcast. And uh, our go-to verse is Romans 12, 2, change your mind, change your life. And today we're talking about burnout. But before we get started, uh, we want to have a, a fun, soft start. So uh, I got some get-to-know-you questions. Fancy like music. That. Yeah. <laughs> some new music. It's new music. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Maybe a little lower. A little bit lower? Okay. <laughs> okay, I can go back then. All right, so if you could completely get rid of one month out of the year, which month would it be and why? Uh, I think for me it would be January because it's cold. All the fun and excitement from the holidays is over, and there's there's this kind of a span of time where it seems like not a lot of fun things happen. Nothing's growing. Nothing's green. And it's cold is the biggest thing for me. <laughs> I'm going to say the same reasons, but I'm going to go February. And that February stretch is like, I can, spring is within our grasp, but it's not there. And it's like the sun just refuses to come out. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go with January only because there's three more days in January, in February, <laughs> which means three more days of really cold weather. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, it's essentially, we, we all pick you know, the super cold months. <laughs> uh, what's the funniest place you've ever fallen asleep? Oh. I fall asleep all the time. <laughs> I don't know. Funniest place I've fallen asleep? I can't even think recently. Um, probably like, um, honestly, probably church. Church? <laughs> oh, for I don't, sure. I don't know if I should admit that on the, I don't know if I should admit that on the podcast, but yeah. And, and realizing that I was asleep and then hoping no one else realized No, I that. saw that. Yeah, right, on. right, right. So for me, uh, probably the most embarrassing place I fell asleep was actually during a a training exercise in the army and uh we it was we were doing sleep deprivation for like a oh, week no. and uh, i was it was three o'clock in the morning we're going through an operation brief i'm standing up oh stabbing gosh. myself in the finger with a pen a ballpoint pen wow. just trying to keep myself awake and i'm just like nodding like this just <laughs> that's torture <laughs> you you were you had i mean it, you had it coming like how would you not fall asleep well, right I after mean, sleep well, deprivation? Well, I mean, well, some people were like smoking cigarettes. Oh know, gosh! Yeah. Other people were putting like chewing tobacco in their eyes. Oh, a bit, you know. oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, just so I, I didn't do either one of those. But. Hey, you should sign up today, folks. <laughs> Join the army. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, Lori, I'll, I'll throw this one over to you. If your hometown was a food, what food would it be? I know it, what Tom wants you to say. I know but. what Tom wants to say. <laughs> It's one of the macaroni food, and cheese. It's one of the food groups here. That's true. Well, this is related. It's a dope food group. Macaroni and cheese. Dairy. Every time you have Dairy. a family function to get together, somebody has to bring macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Okay. What Tommy was referencing is that I would have said queso, and and to prove a point, my wife leads a life group, and somebody in the life group said what their family did for Christmas was order five different restaurant queso and everybody had to try to figure out from the taste of it which restaurant That's a it was. a great game. Oh I my play gosh. That. <laughs> well, just for the record, my hometown, I said, I was thinking turkey and gravy. Turkey and gravy, okay. And then the last one is, what's the worst fashion or hair decision? Tommy, made? you have to go on this one. And <laughs> for my the people I went to school with, the friends and uh, people I went, especially middle school, if you got the... If you got the yearbooks, please don't don't bring them out. But I have a permed mullet, <laughs> and it was it was one hundred percent business in the front. <laughs> Wait, was it was it a cut in a mullet and permed all over, or just permed in the back? Just permed in the back. Nice. Yeah, it, it was definitely party Ooh, in the back, hey. and you know you can almost yeah. do like one of those like uh, you know profile where it was like different on both sides. Just kind of. <laughs> I'm gonna need to see this. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I have had everything from purple hair to skater haircuts to all of that. And hands down, most people that know me would say the worst haircut is shaving my head. Mm -hmm. Some people just don't have the head for bald. Okay. And I do, I do not. I do not. <laughs> and Laura, you actually said that your favorite haircut. Right. Well, earlier. it depends on who you ask. My most awesome hair was my 80s giant mall yeah. bangs. I had the best 80s hair. Yeah. And my dad would tell you. It was the worst hair ever. He used to threaten to come in my room at night and cut it off. But I love your. Dad. It was awesome. I love your dad. Well, as we're here to dive in, uh, we, you know, we want to we want to turn it uh, back a little more serious, and uh, we we know that that stress and uh, depression and anxiety are high, uh, you know, all time highs right now, and uh, and oftentimes that can um, 
be triggers for for burnout. So we just kind of want to talk about that. And uh, absolutely. And uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking about that just as you were opening that we decide sometimes or most of the time as a team what our topics are going to be. And Burnout came out as a topic kind of unanimously. And I think the scariest thing and the reason we want to bring this to people's attention is that often you're in burnout and you didn't realize you were headed for burnout. Mm-hmm. We all have stress. We all know with COVID the last couple of years and um, the economy and just everything that's going on that everybody's under even more stress than usual. And you kind of get used to it and you don't see that you're headed down this path to mm-hmm. burnout. And when you get to burnout, it's not that you can't heal. And we are going to talk about how to heal from that. But boy, is it much harder. If you can recognize and do some preventative maintenance rather than get into burnout, it's so much better. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a definition? Yes. Yeah. That, that, I, I just kind of want to talk about what burnout is. Uh, it was interesting to, to, to see that... Um, the, the first use of the word burnout uh, was actually back in, uh, it was by uh, a, a guy by the name of Freudenberger. He was a New York psychologist, uh, and he used it in the 1960s, uh, and he used the term burnout. Uh, and, and one of the definitions from the Baker Encyclopedia of uh, Psychology and Counseling says that burnout is considered to be a process rather than a state or condition. Popular use of the term is equated or confused it with the experience of generalized stress or anxiety. In actuality, the experience of burnout is much more serious, chronic, debil- debilitating condition. It's typically a gradual decline in job performance and a noticeable decrease in pleasure derived from interpersonal relationships. Symptoms can include cognitive, affective, behavioral, uh, physical, and relational changes in functioning. And so just, uh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. I, I just thought that was a really good definition. May, maybe uh, if, if some of you are like me and you hear definition like that and your head scratching, um, <laughs> there's a lot of similarities between depression and burnout. I think one of the big differences, we're not talking about a, a um, physical uh, hereditary state where it's clinical depression. We're talking about a state brought on by chronic stress that mimics clinical depression. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of the loss of motivation, staying in bed, you know, the things that used to give you pleasure no longer give you pleasure, et cetera, et cetera. So those, those things can really look like each other a lot, but burnout is literally something any of us can bring on ourselves through chronic stress. Yep. And Lori, I I know you had a reading you wanted to, you want to talk about as well uh, out of a, what was the name of the book? Well, actually, this is Tom's book that he brought in, uh, Didn't See It Coming, and this is just from the inside flap of the book. Uh, Life's full of curveballs, but it's possible to see them coming. No one dreams about becoming cynical, disconnected, or burned out, yet it happens daily as our lives collapse under the weight of pride, moral failure, or compromise. Unprepared and unaware, we lose hope, give in, and give up. What's shocking is how these catastrophic collapses often come as a surprise. The question is... Were there warning signs or clues along the way that could have prevented such heartache, loss, and pain? The answer is a resounding yes. We don't have to be blindsided ever again. In Didn't See It Coming, influential pastor, podcaster, and thought leader, Carrie Newhoff, reveals the seven core issues that take people out. Cynicism, compromise, disconnection, irrelevance, pride, burnout, and the emptiness of success, as well as the early warning signs of these threats. Discover how to reverse these significant challenges in your life, closing the gap between who you are and who you've always longed to be. Through personal stories and biblical wisdom, Newhoff provides practical steps to get and stay ahead of these challenges. Start living a full and passionate life with no surprises and no regrets. Don't just survive, thrive. And in all fairness, that is my book, but um, that was actually a a staff read when I first came on here Mm -hmm. at, at Northside. So I want to give leadership credit for recognizing that that um, and and not necessarily that we're more prone, but just that even in ministry, if you don't watch it, you can slide oh, yeah. into burnout and not recognize. and And we'll talk a little bit more about why. But thank you for reading that, Lori. And mm-hmm. I really want to encourage people. It is written by a pastor in some sense from a ministry standpoint, but that book is absolutely meant for anyone. Yep. And uh, go ahead. Well, well, I I think it's interesting that you talked about um, uh, even how how pastors and church staff are. uh, If we're not careful, we can we can find ourselves uh, quickly there, uh, either uh, on the verge of burnout or at burnout. And uh, you know, as I was getting ready for uh, this podcast, you know, I was looking back at some AACC uh, resources and excuse me, 
I was looking back at some AACC resources, and uh, one of the things they said was uh, that helping professions specifically, and their first one was clergy or doctors, teachers, police officers, social workers, or others who work with extensively with people. I mean, people are, are just, um, you know, let's, let's be honest. We're all people. We all uh, we all are all sinners in desperately need of a Savior, and we are broken, and we just have broken situations, and, and we're just messy. We're not widgets. You know? <laughs> That's good. Lori, you were, you were talking prior to the getting on here today and really felt like that was a really good and honest question. Do you remember what you asked about burnout? Uh, well, I asked about stress and burnout, and could you kind of wave between the two? Because oh, that's, yeah. that's kind of what I feel like I do. But mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, I'm going to read a couple things from this website, but another uh, helping um, tool that besides the book would be helpguide.org. Mm-hmm. And they've got everything from the physical, me- emotional, and behavioral signs of burnout, but also kind of the differences between stress and burnout. And if I can just kind of really in kind of a... a a lump summation, the difference between stress and burnout is that stress is really about sort of a hyper response to life. Mm-hmm. So stress creates this anxious, this anxious sort of reactive state. Whereas think of that almost as um, quickly burning out your fuel sources. So when you're, when you're hyper stressed and you're hyper anxious, you deplete all the rest of your energy, all your resources, and the state that results is burnout. Mm-hmm. So I go from hyper reactive to non reactive. I go from over energy and over amounts of, of maybe emotional response to no emotional response to sort of a flat response. So burnout, um, while you may feel like you're sliding into burnout, burnout is a state that once you're in it, you're in it. Mm-hmm. So you you're overstressed, you're overstressed, you're overstressed, and eventually you just can't take anymore. And there's even physical. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to go deep into this, but I'll just say I know enough to say there is something known as adrenal fatigue. Mm-hmm. And and that is a very common thing when you live in a sort of overly stressed, hyper-stressed state. You're constantly releasing adrenaline, and it's so hard on the body. And so once you get into this depressed, burned-out state, you, your body just doesn't have any more to give. Yep. Yep. No, and I, I, I think you just bring up a lot of really good, you know, things to, to be thinking about as far as like the impacts of, of burnout, you know, and some other things I, I uh, as I was looking up some things from the AACC was, you know, like what are some signs, what are some symptoms? And so some additional symptoms we talked about, some of them we've already, we've already talked about some we haven't, but uh, abusing drugs or alcohol, mm-hmm. you know, being basically any kind of destructive behavior. Absolutely. Um, enduring uh, resulting physical illness. Uh, we talked about depression, uh, showing inappropriate anger or sadness, um, uh, being hypercritical, uh, mm. being emotionally distant, or, or, or uh, as you've mentioned before, almost like that numb apathy, um, and then just being very cynical, uh, just uh, hyper s- be, being very cynical towards life. Was just if if you find yourself in those areas, it th- th- those are those are uh, indicators that, that something's happening. Those are things that, that something's going on. Um, you know, it's we don't we don't want to ignore those. We want to uh, have those discussions and. And th- there's so many different resources. There's so many people out there. We were just literally talking to one of our uh, our clinical partners this week uh, in the area that we're going to uh, be working with more closely. Just you know, and and there are just so many people out there just are are willing and able. They're saying hey, we are here to help, and we want to help help come alongside you to navigate through these challenges. Absolutely, in, in a biblical way. Yeah, yeah. You know, with some of those symptoms, uh, I know there are people listening that. And, and uh, please don't hear judgment at all. I want to help whoever is listening. And maybe you're not a super uh, emotional person or in touch with your emotions, and you're not going to see some of those symptoms. I know a lot of people will start to feel the symptoms of burnout in a physical regard. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. some physical symptoms are feeling tired and drained, which we kind of mentioned. Lowered immunity. Are you sick all the time? That can be a huge mm-hmm. sign of burnout. Frequent headaches, muscle pain, muscle spasms. Um and change in appetite or sleep habits are, are big, big signs. If you're not even hungry, if you're overly hungry, if you are you went from somebody who could sleep in the middle of a football game to somebody who wakes up at, uh, you know, the the heat turning on at night when you're sleeping, these might be mm-hmm. symptoms of, of burnout. And I know you already, we talked about this at the beginning, you brought this up, but the longer I listen, the more it's, it's harder for me to tell the difference between burnout and depression. They sound like the same thing to me. 
Well, uh, and and so burnout is 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 basically you you've kind of uh, the way I see it is you you've kind of crossed that uh, that that line that that threshold of of just of just complete lack of care, complete lack of like just wanting to disconnect. Like you know, you you can still be have depression, but but want to be connected. But like where I see burnout is. I want to have nothing to do, like just this right. complete that right. Sense. And and depression is more a symptom within burnout mm-hmm. rather than being. So they're not on equal playing field, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you can be depressed because you're in grieving and you've lost someone. You can be depressed because uh, of a of a um, uh, what's a, like a physical ailment that you have. You can be. And then you can, then there's of course clinical depression where that's a chemical imbalance in the brain, but what we're really talking about is you have depleted everything. And a lot of times we are associating this with work, but something else you said earlier, Lori, I thought was really important, and I want people to hear is, Lori asked, "Can I be burned out from parenting?" <laughs> well, yes, in the mm-hmm. sense that life can burn us out too much, too fast, too often, and we're going to burn out. And, and I I think that's, you know, if you don't hear anything else, uh, we're going to, we're going to, you know, turn a corner here in a second and start talking about solutions. Mm -hmm. But I just, I, maybe that's the best way to say it too much, too fast, too often. And you're going to burn out. Tommy was talking about, and I won't, I'll let you read the scripture, Tommy, but Tommy was giving us some scripture references prior to coming on. And, and the, and the overall idea is, is rest, but Again, I don't want to take that from oh, you, Tommy. No. Go ahead. No, I was just thinking, uh, you know, one of the, the passages I came across was uh, Exodus twenty three twelve. Six days you, six days you shall do your work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. And so, and and that that's uh, Exodus twenty three twelve, the first half of that verse. But the importance is just being um, deliberate um, and intentionality about about giving yourself rest and giving yourself time to recharge. And, and, and there's different types of burnout there. There's spiritual burnout. There's you know, physical, just like we said, you know, there, there's, you, know, you can be burned out from parenting, but, uh, and, and even pastors can get burned out. You know, I was doing some research and some of the statistics were, were kind of staggering, you know, like, uh, according to, uh, back in 2016, they did some research, uh, a couple, uh, a couple professors at, uh, Lincoln Christian over in Illinois, they found that 84% of pastors say they're on call 24 hours a day. 80% expect conflict in their church. 54% find the pastor role frequently overwhelming. 53% are concerned about their family's financial security. 48% often feel the demands of ministry are more than they can handle. And 21% say the church has unreal, unrealistic expectations of them. So, I mean, they are just, they're, they're just feeling it from all sides. And so we, we don't want to say that this is that the, ministers and pastors are exempt from this like right. if, if anything we're, we're right there in the mix you know and and it's interesting too that you know like some of the responses they get that, that they took from uh, from people who are current pastors versus people who were former pastors so like uh, for example uh 21 percent of current pastors versus 49 percent of former pastors believe their churches have unrealistic expectations wow so i wonder if there's like some kind of a yeah, you know that, that that that's a pretty big difference. Mm-hmm. Sometimes Actually. distance, right, gives us perspective. I, one of the things I was thinking as you were reading that scripture is that <laughs> Christians I know love to quote that Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And while that's true, it was created for man, right? So, in other words, we use that to excuse frantic, frenetic work. We we use that as an excuse to not take a rest. And what I want people to hear is that. God doesn't want us to legalistically practice the Sabbath, but he wants us to practice the Sabbath for our good, mm-hmm. right? We right. we have to have that time to to rest and to really rest. Mm-hmm. Um, and rest is different for everybody. For, for my wife, for example, taking a walk or going on a hike is restful for her. Mm-hmm. To me, that's physical activity and isn't <laughs> always rest because I like to work out and do other things mm-hmm. at other times. So for me, rest is literally sitting still. So that's the other thing is learning to define rest for yourself. You know, and as we turn the corner here, we just want to we, we want to conclude by talking about solutions. Uh, one thing Tom and I, we talk about all the time uh, when we're planning and just uh, having meetings is is being in the solutions. It's important, you know, we don't want to discount the, the problem or the situation, but we want to spend the majority of the time we have focusing on solutions. And I know for me, one of the things that has impacted my wife and I over the years, uh, if we don't get a, a control of it, is our, our calendar, our schedule, and mm-hmm. saying, 
yes to certain things and saying no to other things. I, I know Jim props, uh, he, he talked a lot about, um, when you first got here about deepening our yes. And, um, oftentimes I talk about how our kids, they, they call the Meyer across the street, the shoe store. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's not that we don't go to Meyer. We just, we live, uh, 20 minutes away from church. We go to our local JC, uh, grocery store, but there's been many times in the past where we're just so hurried, we're so rushed, and we just we let life just we let our calendar run our lives, and we've rolled up to church and the kids will get out of the van, and they're like, Dad, we don't have any shoes, and we're like, so we were so busy, we weren't even paying attention to what our, our kids were even wearing, or in this case, not wearing. So Jill would run them over to Meyer and get sure the, the two dollar special shoes, and so just you know, we we're just running we we're just running ragged you know with our, with our schedule, and so you know I, I I know that there's many demands when it comes to uh, you know kids uh, sports and activities, and you know many places they they uh, I don't want to say they require, but they highly highly encourage you know private lessons and, and multiple lessons a week and everything, and it can just be exhausting you know just as a family uh, if you know if we don't if we don't really guard our time. That's so important, Tommy. And <clears throat> as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, sometimes there's a deeper reason for busyness. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, many, many times in counseling sessions over the years, um, busyness often becomes a way to escape feeling, uh, becomes uh, an escape from addressing issues that have gone unaddressed. And so the burnout can come in many ways from the combination of the unaddressed issue mm-hmm. and the combination of running and running and running. Yeah. And, you know, God is very clear that be still and know that I'm God. Mm-hmm. And so what I also find is a lot of people who are running frantically, one of the first thing that goes and gives is their time with the Lord. Yep. That Amen. quiet time, that prayer time. So it may seem simplistic or um, overly simple, but a, a, a good remedy to burnout is time with the Lord. Amen. And time that you've, uh, to Tommy's point about schedule, of putting that on your schedule and really carving out a time that you're going to be in prayer, you're going to be in the Word, you're going to be um, conversing with the Lord and seeking after what His will for your life is. Um, that is one of the most powerful tools we have to heal many, many things in our life, including burnout. Amen. Amen. Well, as we get ready to wrap up, you know, we're reminded that, uh, that, you know, we have a saying in, in, in our care ministry, it's uh, prayers primary. And so Tom, I want to see if you would pray us out. Yeah. Before I do that, Tommy, I just wanted to add for oh, folks that, okay. uh, yeah. we, um, we have on our website, a care page and we want folks to be able to go there. If you'll go to mynorthside.com backslash care, we have a list of resources there, including Christian counselors, treatment centers, just about anything you would need. And if you feel you are on the verge of burnout or maybe you're solidly there, uh, we would love to help connect with you, get you connected to a counselor. And if you're listening from outside the area, you're not a part of Northside, we just encourage you to talk to your local church, talk to your pastor. Um, You can do a a local search on Christian counselors. But now is is the time. Don't wait. Do something about it. But yeah, Tommy, I, I would love to pray. Thank you. Yeah. Heavenly Father, um, our hearts go out to the folks that are suffering, that that um, are on the verge or in burnout. And Lord, we know that, that the healing that will come, the healing that needs to come, will come through close relationship with you, through connection with you. Lord, we also know that that comes through our friendships and our relationships with our pastors. And Lord, that you've equipped certain people uh, with skills and abilities in counseling to help us. And so, Lord, I just ask that, uh, through all those means or combination thereof, Lord, that uh, people would get the help and healing that they need. Lord, that you would bring up the right support around them, that you would um, direct them to the right folks. And uh, just bless everyone that's listening, Lord. Thank you as always that we get to do this podcast and we get to be a part of a great care ministry team. Thank you for Tommy and his efforts and always producing this and getting this out on Thursdays. And Lord, we love you. We're so grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, you can check us out every Thursday morning at 7 a.m. to catch this episode or others on uh, multiple platforms, Amazon, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, or Apple. You can also go, just like Tom said, to mynorshow.com slash care for additional resources. We love you guys, and we'll catch you next week.